Tonight, a Call 7 Investigators exclusive. Fire sprinkler systems are designed to save your life. But Call 7 Investigator John Ferrucia discovered what's inside those systems could make a fire worse. Yeah, Mike, it's small enough not to be noticed in most apartment buildings, motels, condominiums, and even nursing homes. But a fire sprinkler head like this one, well, it's often the single most important tool to saving your life in a fire. On August 18, 2009, the fire department in Truckee, California, responded to a fire and explosion at the Hennis Flats apartment complex. A family of five lived there, including 27-year-old Isla Minuti and her three children. She died shortly after arriving at the hospital. Her husband, Willibur Martinez, was horribly burned over more than 40% of his body. Fire investigators found that Martinez had been cooking onions over an electric stove when the pan caught fire. As he moved toward the sink, the fire sprinkler activated directly over him, and there was an explosion. Investigators concluded that the water lines in the sprinkler system throughout the building contained antifreeze. It was a mixture like this of glycerin and water. We're going to pump this into a fire sprinkler system. Charlie Sullivan is a fire suppression consultant with Advanced Engineering Investigations in Denver. Sullivan explains that building fire systems commonly are attached to an outside water source. The sprinkler lines that run in the walls and the attic areas are vulnerable to freezing, so the system is charged with antifreeze containing either glycerin or propylene glycol. If you have water coming in behind it, then you're going to have the antifreeze spraying until the clean water comes in behind that. Investigators in Truckee, California concluded it was the antifreeze in the system that caught fire and caused the explosion. So we contacted Advanced Engineering to help us set up a test to find find out if a sprinkler system can present a danger. Today we've mixed a solution of 60% glycerin, 40% water. Mm -hmm. That is even less glycerin than investigators found in the apartment building system in Truckee. That will get you to minus 47.3 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll see that very commonly in the mountains. For the purposes of our test, we've got a stove here with a hot griddle. It's going to have some grease on it. We're going to see what happens when it catches fire. Right here, we have the sprinkler nozzle where the solution is going to come down over the stove to see if we get a flash. Now, we've set up cameras in several places, so you're going to get a good look at what happens. Okay, go ahead. It seems clear the antifreeze is acting as fuel. Essentially, it looks like it fed the flame. That could also be the grease. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do just a hot pan with no oil. That is important because our research found another fire involving a sprinkler system, this one charged with propylene glycol antifreeze, on October 28, 2001 at this restaurant in Highlands, New Jersey. 19 people were hurt as witnesses reported hearing a pop sound, then saw liquid spraying down from above. This was followed by a fireball developing at the ceiling. That blast melted the ceiling fans and blew out windows. And key to the ignition were the overhead heaters that were sprayed by the solution. Said one witness, a flame developed at the ceiling in the area of the heater and spread across the ceiling. Investigators concluded that when the solution hit the overhead heaters, vapors from the sprayed liquid mixture ignited and a flash fire occurred. So, back at our test site. This is going to be the same solution that's in the fire suppression systems all over the country. Correct. On the stove, a hot pan and griddle. The grease has burned off. Very cool. It is feeding that flame. Were you surprised? I was very surprised. Yeah, never seen that before? No, I've never, never seen that happen before. We conducted our test at the Littleton Fire Training Academy site under the watchful eye of training chief Jay Ruoff. The implications are that the fire's going to get bigger and probably get bigger quicker. And that has Ruoff worried because most fire departments don't track which fire sprinkler systems are charged with antifreeze. I don't think that anybody has a, has a good handle on where the glycerin systems are. So you got to find out. I think we got to find out, and I'm not sure how we do it, but we're going to sure try. Now, if you have a sprinkler system in your building or home, find out if it has antifreeze and find out the percentage of that mixture. Now, the National Fire Protection Association has put out an alert to those who service those systems and has released new temporary guidelines. Meanwhile, this is so serious that the Colorado Health Department has now put out new rules forbidding the use of antifreeze in sprinkler systems in new constructions of nursing homes, 
facilities for the developmentally disabled and other residential care facilities. But that only covers new construction, not any buildings statewide that are already existing. And my contractors who service these systems, they have no authority to force owners to change out these systems in these antifreeze. So many cities now are just beginning to deal with this. I know that you'll continue to follow up on this. We will. Thank you, John.